looking at yesterday's warm up. In order to plan transportation and parking needs at a private high school, administrators ask students how they can get to school. Some rode a school bus, some rode in with parents or friends, and others used personal transportation like bikes, skateboards, or just walked. This table summarizes the responses for boys and girls. Which of the W's are unknown for these data? The when. We don't know the when. What about the what? Do we know the what we're looking at? Or what we're looking for? Which is? What? Transportation. Transportation. Yes. What modes of transportation the students took? Uh, where? Do you know where? Okay. We don't know the exact part of high school, but that's good enough. Uh, how are we taking this information? I would assume it's survey. Does it say survey? But looks like a survey. Who? Okay, yes, the who. Do we know who we're going to take surveys of? Yeah. Male, female students, right? I think that's all of them. So now, <clears throat> let's go through the data. What percentage of students are girls who rode the bus? What would be, what, what goes on the numerator? 34. 34. And what's on my denominator? 188. Okay. What percentage of, of the students, so that's our total students, so 188. So 34 divided by 188. What percentage? 18. 18% of the students are girls who rode the bus. Next, what percent of girls ride the bus? What percent of girls ride the bus? So on top, still 34, right? Mm -hmm. And on the bottom, what total am I using? 102. 102. What percentage of girls ride the bus? So 34 divided by 102, 33%. So a third of the girls. Next question, what percent of bus riders are girls? So what goes on top? 34. 34. And what's my total? What total am I looking for? 64. Starts with the total that gives me there, 64. So 34 divided by 64. is 53%, almost half. What is the marginal distribution of gender? So by marginal, I'm looking at doing what? Find the percentages of the totals. So let me pick green here. I wanna know the distribution of the gender. So I'm looking here and here. So let's see. <clears throat> Actually, I'm sorry, I'm looking at this column here. So I have 86 males over a total of 188. 86 is my 188 is 40, let's say 46 percent. And then females is 102 over 88 or 188. This one's males. So is there an equal distribution between males and females? Is it exact 50-50? No, it's not. I have a little bit more females than males. So I should be cautious when looking at this data and saying, oh, I think more females uh, have a personal use, they ride bikes. I think more females have their own car. Until we look at the conditional frequency of each. So, I have a little chart here that you could have filled out. So, based on this percentage, looking at males, males are most likely to do what? Which mode of transportation? The ride, right? Some rode with parents or friends. Males are most likely to take a ride. Females 
or to do what? Same thing. Looks like the same thing. Most of them are most likely to ride with friends. Bus, they're about equal. Personal, they're pretty close. Is this enough to say, do you think the mode of transportation is independent of ginger? Remember, independent, it doesn't change. The values are about the same. Would you say this is independent? Or does it depend on your gender, what mode of transportation you take? Do you think gender depends on how you get to school? No. I can see these numbers that it doesn't depend. These numbers are pretty, pretty close enough for me to be confident to say it doesn't make a difference. Now let's take our quantitative variables that we can calculate and turn them into graphs, something more visually appealing. Now remember you told me about a bar graph. Bar graphs are what you get when you have a categorical uh, variables. Looks the same, looks like a bar graph, but if you're talking about quantitative, it's actually called a histogram. Notice there are some differences. Bar graphs have equal space between them. Histograms, there's no gaps. It's all, it's all together. That's because it's taking the collection of data as a total. And this is just saying, this class, and this class, and this class, blonde hair, blue hair, black hair. Here, you can think of this as a number line. How much does this fall in this number line? So it's streaming, it's continuous. So when we're talking about quantitative variables, which we're talking about now, we're gonna call this a histogram. All right, other types we can use with quantitative variables is, we just saw histogram is which one? Top left. That one right there. Box and whiskers. Which one do you think is box and whiskers? Also called candlestick when we're talking about Google Sheets. No, not the dots. Which one of these kind of look like whiskers and you see boxes? Bottom. What? Yeah, boxes and you have whiskers. Dot plot. The red one, very good. This is our dot plot. Stem and leaf. No, not the dotted one. Actually, it is this one. Oh, is that what you meant? I'm sorry. And then scatter plot. I think you should all know what a scatter plot looks like. You probably saw this in Algebra 2 or in college algebra. Now, note stem and leaf is interesting because you can think of this as a shorthanded way of writing 18. 19, 22, 25. You see this is the first digit, and this is after that. Or you can think of it as 1.8, 1.9, 2.2, 3.3. It's a really short way. Like I said, math, they're lazy. This is a ma lazy math way of not having to write one point, one point that. <clears throat> it's what do you have in common? What is your first digit, and then what follows trails that? So with graphs, we have Continuous data and discrete data. Notice with bar graph, discrete, right? Different sections and histograms are continuous. It's all connected. Likewise with graphing, continuous, it's all one line. Discrete, plot points. Continuous or discrete? Discrete, it's plot points. <laughs> Scatter plot. Basically have plot in the name. Well, just like that one, that's misleading. This one, continuous or discrete? Discrete, because it's 18, 19, then you jump to 22, 25. Examples for continuous, height of a horse. Could be any value, any range, like your height. You could be um, 60 inches, 61 inches, 62 inches. There's a whole range of inches you can be. You can see me 61.5. Time to complete a task, seconds, just keeps on ticking. You can't jump from five seconds to seven seconds all of a sudden. <clears throat> outdoor temperature, temperature doesn't go from 60 degrees all of a sudden out of nowhere 90 degrees. There's a continuous path, right? You gotta go through the numbers to get up there. Discrete, a number of people in your class, sometimes there's seven people in here, tomorrow there may be two people. After that, there may be 30 people in here. 
Number of TV sets in your house. I, I like what it knows here. No fractional parts of a TV set. No fractional parts of a person. There isn't 8.5 students in this class. That would be, the cops would be involved if that was the case. <clears throat> Number of TV sets in your home. No fractional parts. You can't have half of a TV working anyway. <clears throat>